In this video, we're going to create another element that is part of the base for the watch, particularly the number 12 that is sitting at the top of the base. Now, there's going to be some parts that are repetitious to what we've already learned, but we're also going to be looking and learning some other techniques of how to work with your G-Mask, your 3D shapes in this lesson that are different from the first two lessons about creating the base. So if you remember, here's where we left off, where we've got the different elements of the base. We've got our number seven in place. We've got the dial with the different widgets and the number above it. This is already done. So as I said, we want to create the number 12 that's going to be along the top. Now for reference, I have a still image of what we want to create. Now, Flame has 3D text tools, as we know this. And we, if we had the font, we can very easily create the 3D text with its own internal tools. But in this case, this is a very specific font that we don't have, so that's why we have to model it. And we want to use this image as a reference to draw out the different shapes that will make up this number 12. So as I said, let's go back to our schematic and let's bring in a brand new action tool and let's connect our image of the number 12 as the background, hold the shift key and kiss and then hit F4 and we step into the end result of action. We see there is our number. Let's go to our schematic, hit the tilde key, and let's bring in a 3D shape. Hit the F4 key once again. We wanna look at our end result and let's zoom in so we can see our reference numbers up close. Now, before we start to draw out our shapes down in our detailed area, on the G-Mask controls, go to the vertice parameters for the G-Mask and make sure Auto Tangent is off. We'll do this for now because it's just going to eliminate us having to break the tangents every time we draw them because especially for this number one, we're going to need corner points more than we need curved Bezier control points. So let's just come into the viewport now. Our Draw Shape tool is active. Let's just click and create our vertices for the outside part of the number one. Don't have to be absolutely perfect when you're first drawing it. We can obviously adjust it afterwards. Once you've closed your geometry, let's go to the geometry setting and let's adjust our transparency so we can see through the actual geometry just created to fine tune our vertices. This also will allow us to draw another geometry on top of that one and see the inner white part of our number. But let's first create the bottom geometry for the number two. So hit the tilde key to go to our schematic. We drag a new 3D shape into the scene. Hit the F4 key to go back to our end result. We're in draw shape mode again for our new 3D shape we're about to create. So I'll come over on this side and start to draw the outside shape of the number two. And because we turned off auto tangent, the corner points are created when we click, which we want. But then if we need a curved shape, we just simply click and drag to create the curved shape. And once again, when we want a corner point, we just single click and don't drag to create that shape. I just go around the number two reference image and finish drawing our shape. And as always, we can always add more control points after we've created it if we need to. So I'll close off this number and then we can start to adjust our tangents to better align with the shape of the number two. Now here's a good example. I want to add another control point right here. But before I do that, I want this to actually have tangents. So let's go back to the settings. Let's select object, go back over to auto tangent and turn back on auto tangent. And then when I click and create this new shape, you'll see that it has tangents automatically applied to it. Just remember to hit the M key to go back to your select tool before you start to click and try to adjust the shape you just added. And just for reference though, if we go back and we turn auto tangents off again, and we click to add a control point right here, you'll see it doesn't have tangents. It is a straight or corner point, or what is called a break point inside of Flame. Let me hit Control Z to undo that. I don't need that control point there. And make sure you hit the M key to go back to your Select tool. Once again, I'll go back down to the geometry settings, and we want to increase the transparency so we can see through this mask or this geometry that we just created. 
Now these two shapes, the two geometry we just created, this will be the background part of the letter, which will be a darker, almost black color. So let's go back to the schematic view and let's add two more additional 3D shapes into our scene. The first one will be for the inside part of the number one. Remember I have auto tangent off before I started to create this new shape. And I'll just fine tune these a little bit. All right, let's add one more 3D shape for the top part of the number two. And just as we did before, I'm going to just click and drag when I need a corner or just click once when I need a corner or break point. I'll just go along and fine tune each number, each mask that I'm happy with it. And once we are happy with our numbers, we're going to add materials and we can copy it into the other action schematic. But for right now, let's just finish off these last little adjustments. Let's go back to our action schematic. We want to add another axis that is going to be the master or parent of all of these 3D shapes we've just created. So we'll hold the shift key and kiss each one of the main axes from our 3D shapes with this new master or parent axis, if you will. Go back to the end result and let's disable our background image so we don't see it anymore. Something, something doesn't look right. I, let's, let's set the transparency to zero for each one of our shapes again. Let me select the top axis and rotate this. The number two should be white. All the masks should be white right now. I'm not sure what is happening yet. Let's start to extrude them to see what's going to happen. I'll select the axis for the first mask we created. Go back to the end result. From the basic settings, let's extrude this part of the number one. Let's enter a depth value of 20 and switch it to be from the front. Let's go enable shading once again from our node preferences. So make sure it's at active and set the shading percentage to 100. Let's go back to the schematic and I'll select the second 3D shape we created, which was the base for the number two. Let's set the depth value of 20 and switch it to front. Yeah, something's not right here. Let's see. Let's go back to our schematic. Ah, there's an accidental connection of our master axis that is going to the axis for the G mask. When I did the shift kiss, I must have accidentally connected that. So let's disconnect that. Let's hit F4 now. Yes, that's what we were expecting to see. Okay. So be careful, of course, when you're holding your shift and you're connecting your axis to your nodes to make sure you're only connecting it to the ones that you want to. All right, select the 3D shape for the inner part of the number one, and then go back to our end result, and let's give it a depth value of 20, just like the other shapes. Then go back and select its axis, and then adjust the Z position to about 17. Now let's select the fourth G mask that we created, which is the inside part of the number two, which will be the top eventually. We can select it right here inside of the viewport this time. We can hit the tilde key and you can see that it's highlighted in yellow, but just make sure the 3D shape is what is selected. Adjust its depth to about 20, just like the other shapes. You can select its axis. And we'll enter 17 for the Z position, just like we did for the top part of the number one. So if we go back to our schematic and select the top axis, so we can rotate it around, you see we've now created the number 12 that matched the image that our client wanted us to use. Let's copy this all now and bring it into the other action that we were working on. So select the axis while holding the Alt key or the Option key on Mac, which then selects all the children of that node. Choose Control-C to copy it. 
hit the escape key, go back to our batch schematic, and select the original action, and then hit the tilde key to step into that action setup. This is the action setup we left in video two, where we had the base almost completed. Let's go back to its schematic and hit control V to paste our text into this setup. Once again, I'll hold the Alt or the Option key on Mac and select the main parent axis so I can move this off to the side. For the result, and we can see it's not obviously aligning properly. It's not respecting the position of our base and the master axis that we originally connected. Select the top axis by control clicking it. That will deselect all the nodes below it. And now just it is selected. Then click the reset button to make sure we reset all of its parameters to the default setting. And then we'll go back to our main axis, which is the parent for everything. And we'll click off of it and attach it to this axis that's controlling this group. Now, if we hit F4, we can see the 12 number is smack dab in the middle of our base, and it's kind of large. So let's make some adjustments to this. But before that, let's assign the material that we have applied to our little handle, the circle shape, to the bottom part of both these letters, the lower part of the letters. So we go back to our schematic, hit the tilde key. We know that the main bottom part of the numbers are these two groups right here, the ones directly under the parent axis. So first we need to hit the P key to switch to the connect tool. And then you're gonna drag off of the 3D shape and then drag it and connect it to the material node we assigned earlier. Do that for both 3D shapes. And then we'll hit the L key to switch to our light link tool. And then click off the shader node and drag that to both geometries. Now, if we hit F4 and go back to our end result, we can see that the base part of both the one and the two have that material applied to it. Now we want to position it and scale it down. Like I said earlier, let's go back to the end result of what we're trying to achieve. And you can see how it's pushed up to the top and uh, much smaller, uh, but aligned with our base. Let's hit escape, go back to our schematic and let's go in select this action node, hit F4. Let's go back into our schematic, hit the tilde key to make sure we have the right axis selected. We do. We'll go back to our end result and now we can use our parameters and first scale this down. Let's bring it down to about 62% for right now. We'll probably have to adjust that more, but let's then go over to our position sliders. Let's start dragging to the right in the Y to bring it up. We also need to adjust our Z a little bit. So I'll start to drag that to the right to increase it. Again, now that we've made adjustment to the Z, let's go back to the Y. Let's make some adjustments there, keeping an eye on our viewport, our end result. Again, adjust the Z a little bit. Let me zoom in our viewport so we really can see what we're doing here. This is just a matter of making the adjustments to get the end look that you want. I'll bring the Z to 33 for now for the position. Let's scale it down even a little more, maybe 52. So now that looks pretty good for right now. So if we go back to the schematic and we select the main axis for everything and then come back to our end result. And we start to rotate that a little bit. We can see that our 12 is part of our base and it's also casting shadows based on the light and the shadow cast settings we've already set up. So that's where we're gonna leave off this video. We pretty much have the base completed. It's a couple little details we'll wanna fine tune and touch on later. Such as the flame logo and maybe a couple little graphics that we wanna to add to our base. But we'll look at that in the next video.